right now. Good evening, everyone. Uh, this is the regular meeting of ANC 34G. Uh, we meet on the second and the fourth Mondays of each month. Um, my name is Randy Speck. I'm the commissioner from ANC 34G03, which is basically the area between Nebraska and Utah and Broad Branch. And we're glad to have everyone here tonight. I'm chair of the commission, uh, and I will then let all the other commissioners introduce themselves. Uh, Chaz, you want to go first? Sure. My name is Charles Cadwell. I'm a Commissioner for Single Member District 34G07 in the southwest corner of the ANC between Reno, Nebraska, um, a little bit of Nevada, and military. Connie? Skip over me. I'm printing something. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Peter? I'm Peter Gosselin. I'm uh, the Commissioner for District 6, which is the west side of Connecticut back to 41st Street between Western Avenue and the Chevy Chase Circle and military with a peninsula to the east of Connecticut between Kanawha and Legation. Welcome. Lisa. Good evening, everyone. My name is Lisa Gore and I'm the commissioner for 34G01, which serves the neighborhoods of Hawthorne and Barnaby Wood. I am so glad to be back with my ANC community. <laughs> after a little hiatus. Um, and just a big thank you and shout out to everyone in uh, single member district 301 for um, putting up with my absence for a while. But my territory covers Western Avenue, past Pinehurst Circle, down um, Beach, back up to um, Oregon and back up to Western Avenue. Thank you. John? Okay, uh, my name is John Higgins. I'm the commissioner for AN ANC uh, 3G single member district 02. The borders are roughly military to uh, Aberfoyle, north to, uh, south to north, and Oregon to Utah, east to west. And Connie? Hi, I'm Connie Chang. I'm the commissioner for single member district 05, which begins um, on the east side of Connecticut, uh, where Chase Bank is, all the way up through Community Center to Western to Broad Branch Road. And then it hooks in uh, between Nevada and Chevy Chase Parkway down to Jocelyn. Nice to be here and glad you guys are showing up, those who are here. <laughs> okay, uh, we have uh, six commissioners here tonight. So we're, we have a quorum and can conduct business. Uh, I expect that uh, Commissioner Zeldin will join us um, shortly, I hope. Um, we are again, as we have been for some time meeting virtually, that means that the commissioners will all have audio and video throughout the meeting. Uh, there will be occasions during the meeting when we will recognize some of those who are attendees and make them panelists so that they will have both audio and video as well. Uh, we encourage everyone to use the Q&A if they've got any questions, use the Q&A function. If you've got comments to make, you can put them in the chat. And let me emphasize, as I have on uh, some of the other occasions when, when we've been having meetings that have been disrupted to a certain extent, please be uh, courteous to others in your chat. Um, let's not use um, disparaging language. Uh, let's be respectful to others. Uh, we really expect that from our uh, attendees. Um, and if people can't abide by those rules and we'll ask them to leave uh, because it's just not appropriate to have that kind of conduct in a meeting like this. Um, <clears throat> the meeting is going to be recorded. And at the end, we will also um, um, have the Q and A and the chat copied and all of that will be posted on our website. And the uh, video will be available for viewing uh, beginning probably tomorrow. Um, and, since Commissioner Zeldin has now joined us, I'll let him introduce himself. Hello, sorry to be late and sorry to be un um, videoed, but I will do that in a few minutes. Uh, Michael Zeldin, I'm 3G04, which is Lafayette, uh, Utah and Nebraska and Broad Branch and Upland. And uh, Lafayette Elementary is the biggest part of the district. Okay, thank you, Michael. Um, the first order of business is to adopt an agenda. Uh, the agenda that we have, have has been posted on our website and on various uh, listservs and other social media 
in the neighborhood. Uh, there's been one change that was also posted um, recently, just in, over the weekend, and that is the, the discussion with uh, Christopher Gelhart, Gelthart, who's the deputy mayor for public safety. We were going to be discussing the enhancing public safety in apartment buildings. We've moved that to July 11th because he's no longer available to meet with us tonight, um, but we'll include that there. So with that change to the uh, agenda, uh, all those in favor of adopting the agenda? Thank you, seven zero. Okay, uh, first item on the agenda is commissioner announcements as it usually is. And the first thing I wanna say is congratulations to Lisa Gore. Um, She's just, she ran a really outstanding campaign. Uh, I know she raised a lot of issues that were important for our community and for the dis district as a whole. We appreciate her willingness to put herself out like that. And you know, despite the fact she didn't win, she did very, very well. I mean, she got, I believe it was over almost 32,000 votes in the city. That's really remarkable. And um, she was uh, running against an incumbent who's always difficult to, um, to run against and she did just a remarkably good job. So we wanna congratulate Lisa for her work on uh, getting the word out to the city and, and running a really excellent campaign. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. And Thank Randy, you. if I may add one thing, I, I think Lisa's campaign is uh, exhibit A for ranked choice voting. Absolutely. Absolutely, 100%. Yep. Okay, the, the second announcement I have is with regard to the Palisades July 4th Parade. Um, and this is an event that's been going on for, I believe, 56 years. Um, and it's going to be this next Monday. And uh, several of us walked in the parade last year. Several commissioners walked in the parade. And I personally, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a, a great event. Uh, it was great camaraderie among the uh, commissioners. And this year we'd like to do it again. And we hope that some of our constituents can join us. Um, it begins at, uh, the parade actually begins at 11, but they begin lining up at 10 at the corner of White, Whitehaven Parkway and um, MacArthur Boulevard. And uh, if you just join there, you don't have to register anything in advance. You can just show up and uh, you can walk with us. And that would be really terrific. We'd like to have we're going to get our banner, I think, for the uh, ANC 34G, and we'll carry that and march as a group uh, in the parade. And I think that would be really terrific. Uh, if you need more information, the Palisades Community Association website has more information about that as well. Uh, and we'll, we'll hope there'll be really good weather. Um, the next announcement I have is one that I, I come to with some. Uh, nostalgia and, and uh, reluctance, but I'm, it, it's time to do it, I think. I am proud to have served as an advisory neighborhood commissioner in ANC 34G since January 2013, and as its chair since January 2015. I'm grateful to the 19 commissioners with whom I've served and from whom I've learned. It's now time, however, for others to assume this demanding but rewarding role. Thus, I will not seek re-election in November to represent ANC 34G03. The last two years have been especially challenging. Not only did the pandemic require the commission to meet virtually, but we've had six new commissioners who had to learn on the job while tackling some particularly difficult issues. Uh, for instance, the, the DCPS proposal to make the military road school exclusive for Lafayette Elementary Pre-K rather than open it up to district, all the district's kids. The development of the Chevy Chase small area plan and the Murray schools proposal to build a sports field behind the Episcopal Center for Children. The commission addressed these and many other topics energetically, transparently, sincerely and cooperatively, though it was impossible to satisfy all of our constituents. As will always be the case, the commissioners who are elected in November will be expected to offer their views on a number of formidable decisions. They will have a major role in developing the, and the, to, in helping to develop uh, the, the new civic core with the community center and library that will serve the community's needs and housing that will bring more diversity and affordability to Chevy Chase. 
Commissioners and their new zoning design and development committee will be key to the implementation of the small area plan. The commission will continue to press for ways to address overcrowding at Lafayette, the implications of our neighbor in our neighborhood of the plans for bike lanes on Connecticut Avenue, the continued vitality of our small businesses and the constant need to address racial and social equity issues. While I will no longer be a commissioner, I expect to help where I can to support and strengthen our neighborhood and to make it an even better place to live, work, play, and learn. I also plan to work with the Office of Advisory Neighborhood Commissions as a mentor for the new commissions that have been created by redistricting and for the newly elected cohort of commissioners. I hope to share my 10 years of experience to shorten the learning curve for first time commissioners, including whoever represents ANC 34G03 next year. I encourage anyone who cares about the neighborhood to pick up the petitions after July 20th to get on the ballot, to collect the required 25 signatures by August 11th, and to run to be a commissioner in the November 8th election. You will get to know your neighbors better, learn how to make the district government work more effectively for us and contribute to the community's well-being. I appreciate the opportunity that I've had to make what I hope has been a positive difference for Chevy Chase, Barnaby Woods, and Hawthorne. To facilitate our commission's transition, I am also resigning as chair effective at the commission's July 11th meeting when the commissioners will select a new chair for the remainder of the year. I will, however, remain on the commission until the end of my term on December 31st, 2022. Okay, any other commissioners have announcements to make? Peter? Uh, first, I, I wanna thank you, Randy, for your service and for our not always smooth uh, uh, relationship, but one that has worked over these two years. Um, it's a hell of a record you've established. Uh, I, uh, I want to, and I think some of the other commissioners will say this, I, I want to uh, remind residents that um, uh, as we move forward with planning for our community, uh, 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 there, we need to stay involved. And there are three immediate opportunities to stay involved tomorrow um, from uh, uh, 9 to 11, uh, the district uh, Department of Transportation is doing a virtual meeting about the plans to revamp Connecticut Avenue, including the installation of uh, protected bike lanes. And then on Wednesday uh, from 6 to 8 p.m., um, the DDOT will uh, repeat that hearing, uh, that meeting, but in person at the University of D the District of Columbia. I have posted on social media uh, the links Connie Chang and Chaz Cadwell, who are on the DDOT Community Advisory uh, Committee, uh, have also posted it. I will, or Connie will, one of us will put the links to how you, the details of these meetings in the chat. Um, and, um, and finally, uh, the third opportunity, and I encourage people to take up, is uh, on July 5th, the day after the 4th of July, uh, the council uh, will hold a public roundtable uh, on considering uh, on the legislation to make the Chevy Chase small area plan um, part of the comprehensive plan and part of the overall plan for the city. Um, I encourage people to, um, to sign up to testify. To do that, you have to do it by, I think, close of business Friday the 1st. Um, I think the major issue is one that we're going to discuss tonight, but we need to be at the table in the drafting of the new zones, zoning area for our commercial district. Um, on another matter, I'd just like the uh, commission's permission, uh, let's see, um, the, the segment of road of Chevy Chase Parkway between Legation Street and Military Road, which this commission has worked on for a very long time to get some safety measures that overall have worked, got repaved in the last uh, a few weeks. Um, and unfortunately, all of the things that we managed to get in place to improve safety there had to be pulled up to put the pavement down. Now, we're only um, a little more than a week since the pavement went down. Um, um, by, by the time we get to the 11th, we will be three weeks away from when the pavement went down. 
Already you can see people speeding up over this now wonderfully smooth pavement uh, with no markings on it at all. Um, I'd like the commission's permission to, if, if it isn't marked by if those Bollard Island and the, and the pavement warnings uh, are, are not put back before our July 11th meeting, I'd like to be able to write on behalf of the commission to DDOT and ask them to get them back fast before we have another accident. Absolutely. Uh, okay, and uh, that's, that's where my, my uh, announcements end. Okay, anyone else with announcements? John? Well, I would like to echo Peter's response to Randy's uh, departure from the commission in the past year. Randy's been a true mentor and I wanna thank him for his service to our community for all these years. And he has helped me very much in, in my uh, rookie, rookie term. And I just wanna say thanks a lot to Randy for all, all he's contributed to our community. Thank you. Um, I, I also would like to jump in here. Um, you know, I met Randy when uh, we, I guess the commission, the the previous commission was uh, looking at uh, the community center, how to modernize it. And I got to, um, I got to talk to Randy and share some thoughts. And I thought, wow, you know, the commission has some serious talent there. And um, this last year and a half, we've really covered a lot of important issues and it's, it's not all been easy. And I echo what John and Peter have said, which is that Randy, you've been a tremendous mentor to certainly to me, I won't speak uh, about others, but you have, and you always pick up the phone and you're always doing the work. Um, it does not matter what time of day um, I email you or call you, you're there. And, um, and it's hard to imagine that you're not going to be a part of the new commission next year. I know that it must've been a hard decision for you because you are um, a true public servant at heart. I mean, you have, um, a heart of gold, you care about this community so much. Um, you put so much effort in and it just shows. And I am so sorry that um, it, is, it has been hard. You know, we've, we've been criticized in some ways and maybe personally attacked, but I want you to know that I've worked closely with you and I know you are a, um, a person who I respect really deeply. And, um, and I really uh, am going to, it's going to be really hard for the community not to have you sitting as a commissioner because you are just pretty amazing at it. Um, and I'm very happy that OANC will have your services because they need it. And, um, and you serving as mentor will be a welcome relief. So thank you. Thank you, Randy, so much. Um, I'll let Chaz go. And then I, I do have um, uh, to add a few more announcements. I just wanted to um, say, Randy, I'm glad to know that I'm number 19. Um, your ANC colleagues, uh, but that uh, short term doesn't diminish my appreciation for what you've done during my time since January. So I can just echo what everybody else has said, and I hope that we can arrange a, a more uh, appropriate send off for you at some point in the fall. Lisa? Randy, I don't know what to say other than you will be sorely missed. I've worked with a lot of great leaders in my tenure of federal service uh, in public service and you are truly exemplary of what that word is in terms of leadership um, you've weathered a lot of roads in the short time that i've known you since i've been on the anc um, and it's not easy um, you know for yourself and i know after running this public <laughs> campaign how often you know people that try to step out there and do the right thing for communities uh, and you know put other people's needs before their own, how often you come under attack. Um, and that is very difficult, but you've, you've done it with grace. Um, you've always opened your door to us, even when we've had dis, you know, disagreements um, and you've handled that respectfully. Um, <laughs> I wish you the best and um, you know, when if you say it's time, I'm gonna say it's time, and, and you deserve the best. I mean, you deserve a break, just like everybody else does. Um, and I am so glad that you're gonna still be in the ANC, you know, working with Office of ANC because we do need your expertise. This ANC will continue to need your expertise, and as long as I'm on it, I'm gonna call you. <laughs> so thank you for picking up the phone. Thank you for everything that you've done. 
Um, thank your wife, Samantha, for um, giving you to the community um, because it does take the whole family to do this. And, and she's done that gracefully as well. So just thank you for your leadership and, and the community will miss you. So, so can I add in disagreement with Lisa? <laughs> Where, where she says, when you say it's time, it's time. I think, honestly, you should have put it to a vote. Because <laughs> I think you would have lost uh, six to nothing. Um, uh, Samantha but, gets seven votes, though. <laughs> uh, but echoing everything that everyone said, you, you were really the glue that held this commission together. All of us were brand new and didn't know what we were doing in, in many, many ways. And you were a very patient teacher of, of us and importantly, a more patient mentor uh, for us. And I don't know exactly how we're gonna muddle through without you. Although if you change your phone number, you'll probably get a lot more peace because I expect <laughs> that each of us is going to be calling you saying, Randy, so how do we do this again? Or who do we contact or, is it permissible? All of the questions that we asked time in and time out. So on behalf of um, 3G04, I want to thank you. And on behalf of the broader community, uh, for which I have no authority to speak, but I'm going to speak anyway, I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you all. I, I really do appreciate that. And you're free to change your mind. When do, when do we have to collect our petitions? August 11th. <laughs> All right, so you have until uh, August 10. <laughs> okay. Okay, any well, other yes, announcements? I was gonna make an announcement. So um, Peter did um, announce about the DDOT uh, study on the multimodal study, the reversible lanes that are gone now and the protected bike lanes. All of that is on our website under announcements. So if you click on it, um, you will see uh, how to get um, how to get onto the to the virtual meeting tomorrow from 9 to 11, and also uh, the address for UDC and the room at UDC, it's all there. Uh, so please go there. And then the July 5th um, round table that counts, uh, that council chair Mendelson is uh, for the committee on the whole is going to, um, I guess, organize. That also is on our website. So please go there, anc3g.org, it's all up there. Um, one more thing is uh, last, at our last meeting, we did have a resolution about enhancing reproductive health protections amendment act of 2022 that hearing is taking place um, on thursday july 14th uh, at 12 o'clock and that is not yet posted on our website i will post that after but just wanted people to remember to have that date in their head if they would like to um, either testify or just listen in um, and that's the first time that the council will be uh, looking at that um, proposed uh, legislation. I think on we'll, that, do we have someone testifying from the ANC on our resolution? We do, we do not. You know, John and I, uh, we put that together. We haven't talked. We could talk about who would like to go and, 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 and say, say a few words. So that could be, we might be able to be ready for our July 11th public meeting. So let's discuss that. But I did, I did see it and I will post it so others will know. Okay, any other commissioner announcements? Okay, I see Amir is um, attending today from the mayor's office. Amir, if you wanna raise your hand, if you have any announcements you'd like to make. Are you elevating Amir? I, I will, yeah, okay. I can. Okay, Amir. Good evening. Can everyone hear me okay? Yes, we can. Great. So my name is Amir Garabintab. I'm the Ward 3 Liaison for the Mayor's Office of Community Relations and Services. I don't have a lot of major updates today. I did want to make the announcement that Mayor Bowser has uh, announced slots for the monkeypox vaccine. So uh, starting today at 1 p.m., they did open enrollment for the vaccine. It's kind of been like the early COVID vaccine rollout where everyone just signs up all at once. So the, the appointments went away within a matter of a few minutes, but um, the link for that is preventmonkeypox.dc.gov. And I'll put that in the chat. 
and uh, that should link you to the website. Um, I believe they're currently prioritizing certain groups of people that are more uh, susceptible to the, to the virus, um, but they do uh, have it publicly available at this time. Um, also, as we've heard, the uh, 4th of July parade is going to be held next week, the 4th of July in the Palisades. Uh, I'll be there. Um, I do ask that if anyone hears any uh, suspicious activity or something like that, to please include me on any correspondence, uh, if you may. And I do have a question for the commissioners. Uh, I'd like to know, are all of you interested in going to the parade? Some of you just want to know who's going so I can uh, have that down. I think there are three of us thus far. Okay, great. All right, great to know. And I can take any questions and concerns from uh, anyone else at this time as well. Any questions for Amir? Amir, I have one question. Um, there has been a rash. <laughs> I hate to talk about this, but there's been a rash in 3G01 of folks walking their dog and not properly disposing of the contaminant. Um, is in one of the neighbors sent me, I guess, signs. Does do you know anything about signs from uh, DC government that we could post that says how to properly dispose of dog waste? Yeah, they have um, signs that you know warn people that it's a offense to not pick up your dog's waste. Um, and I also have to clarify this, but there are actually little posts that they make that have like um, trash for um, doggy bags. I'll have to confirm if that's something the DC government does. Cause I see that a lot in certain neighborhoods in DC where they have like a small trash container just for dog waste. Um, so that may be a possibility as well, but DDOT, I can ask DDOT to uh, explore the possibility of putting down the warning signs for that as well in the meantime. Okay, that would be great. Yeah, if you can send me like a location that this happens a lot on. That's what I was gonna ask you. Um, how do you guys prioritize or how do you guys decide which locations um, get those receptacles and how often are they emptied? Oh, for those receptacles, um, I think honestly, they probably uh, prioritize higher traffic areas. So that might not be as immediate of a thing that happens versus just the warning signs. Okay. I think a lot of times they place them, you know, in very dense neighborhoods or near a lot of buildings. So that might be something they place near Connecticut Avenue. It might not happen in Hawthorne, but they, they they can probably put down the signs that actually warn people of not doing that. Okay, that would be great. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Okay, any other questions for Amir? Michael, you're muted. One of one of, one of the one of the things Amir that I get calls about all the time is this gas blow, leaf blower. Yep. Um, law that is not being enforced and you can go anywhere essentially in the city and you will see not just the mom and pop people who i think should have been in some way uh, excluded from this because the costs to them are enormous they they all tell me that batteries last about 45 minutes that the blowers themselves cost like fifteen hundred dollars and the batteries four or five hundred dollars they're being stolen from their, their trucks, um, the batteries are. But more importantly, the large companies that theoretically can afford this better are ignoring the law with apparently impunity. Um, I don't see the police going around ticketing anybody. There's no other enforcement mechanism that I know of. And so I'm just wondering what is the plan with respect to this so that when people call me up and say, they're blowing with a gas blower on my street. What am I supposed to tell them? Go out there so, and, and tell the guys to stop, which is dangerous. I don't know if it was um, with you that I last spoke on this about, but um, they do have a website for reporting uh, this activity uh, for neighbors to use. Uh, let me pull that up real quick. Um, it might not have been with you the last time I spoke about this, but um, there were complaints that the um, reporting website was had some issues, it was a uh, technical issue. So I did alert DCRA, their IT team to handle that. Um, so let me find the link for this um, for this website right now. But yeah, they do have a tool that you can use to report uh, violations for that. 
It might take me a minute to get this, but I'll post it in the chat. Okay. Michael, you're muted. But, uh, but I, get, I get questions which says what? If I see the ABC company using a gas blower, do I, am I required in this web portal to say my name is and I am filing a complaint? Because a lot of them want to do it with anonymity because they don't know what the um, fallout for them is. And do they need to take photos of them doing it? Because if you call the company and you say, um, we hear that you're using gas blowers, they'll say, no, no, we have electric blowers because many of these companies I see have gas blowers and they have on their trucks electric blowers. So uh, I don't think they use the electric blowers, but if anyone says you're not using it, then they say, oh, no, 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 we have them. They're on our truck. We'll send you copies of it. Um, it's just a complete scam. And so I, I just would like you to get me some more clarity uh, because it's one of the things I get um, asked about the most these days. Sure thing. Yeah, I'll, um, I'm on the tool right now. So I'm looking to see if they actually require you to put in your name. Um, it looks like they do have a name for you, but I don't know if this uh, information or uh, a title, a box for you to put in your name, but I don't think this information would get relayed to any of the businesses. Um, but it's the uh, CPU, the consumer protection request. Um, and one of the options is gas powered leaf blowers. So it asks, for example, a date of violation, a time of violation, um, the name of the business, location. And it does ask for the complainant's information, uh, but I don't think that would get relayed. Yeah, but I can, I'm happy to link this to you right now. This is actually the first time, first or second time I'm seeing this. Um, because I think they changed the layout. But let me post this in the chat right now. Um, and if there's any issues with this, I'm happy to relay them to our DCRA account manager for Ward 3. Um, I actually haven't heard about any of the results from this uh, form yet, but if you haven't heard about it before, I implore you to let your neighbors know about this uh, and see what happens from that. Yeah, I, I, would, I would urge you. And they do have an option for photos, for files. Yeah, well, it would seem to me that the mayor's office and, and the council have the burden of letting people know how this law should be in, enforced. Yeah, I think one of the ways, this is one of the ways, I think DCRA is taking more of an enforcement role on this rather than MPD, um, given that they have a whole section for gas-powered leaf blowers. So... I would recommend that to start with, to not uh, mention this to the police, not have this, you know, be a police priority. Um, but if that doesn't work, that might need uh, different avenues of enforcement through either the executive or perhaps the council might need to amend the law in that case. Okay. Just pointing out that it's mm -hmm. the recurring issue and it's developing a lot of cynicism, which is never Absolutely. good in government. Yeah, please get that link around and hopefully that would work for everyone. And I'll post this on the listservs as well since um, it seems to be a hot topic in this area. Well, and I would suggest that if it if actually anyone is ever fined under this um, enforcement mechanism that you advertise it so that um, people believe that there's actually merit mm -hmm. to go through the process of doing this rather than not. Mm -hmm, of course. And also, let me uh, read out the, there's a disclaimer at the beginning of this, actually. It says, please note, DCRA can, can open investigations uh, to report losses or total $250 or more, or there is a pattern or practice of abuse. So this does mention that there is a monetary uh, fine to this. And I'll be sure to specify that for the gas-powered leaf blower ban, how much that is, because this is more of a general thing. It just lists out that DCRA does have the power to enforce a monetary fine and it includes gas powered leaf blowers. What's the fine amount? Um, for gas, po gas powered leaf blowers, I believe it's $500, but let me make sure. In DC, oh uh, yeah, $500 for each offense. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Amir. Thank you, Amir. Any other questions for Amir? Okay, thank you, Amy. Eric, uh, I don't see anyone else who has a hand up in, uh, wanting to make an announcement. Um, 
So we'll just move on to our next item. And there we need to. Um, I, will elevate, I will elevate uh June and Paul. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yep. No, no worries. Uh, the next item on the agenda is a uh, discussion of and possible vote on a, the Knollwood application to renew its Class C restaurant liquor license. Um, and Commissioner Higgins has recused himself on this since he is a uh, resident at Knollwood. And so we have uh, Paul Bricker from Knollwood and Jane Schonenheiser. Is that, did I mispronounce your name? It's June Schonhammer. Shone hammer, okay. June I, I just call her the hammer, Randy. Okay. <laughs> so uh, she's our executive chef and our general manager. And I got to take a moment. First, thank you to all of you, your volunteers. And uh, I appreciate your service. Um, I met Randy when I first took this job back in 2017. And he's been a wonderful advocate for this community. He advocated for us for CRAC, for the E6 bus. Anytime we had an issue, he was... He came to know what I tried to buy him lunch. He wouldn't let me buy him lunch. He met with all my residents. I told him, Randy, our residents, they vote early and they vote often. So it would be good for you to come see them. And uh, it's really been, it's been a wonderful opportunity to work with him and uh, he, we're gonna miss him. So with that, I appreciate the opportunity to come before you. Knollwood, I'm the chief operating officer. I'm a retired army officer. We take care of retired officers of the uniformed services and other folks. Randy, you get an, an honorary invitation to come be a resident of Knollwood one day, whenever you're ready. Uh, but we have a, a dining room and we've had, we've had a liquor license for since we've been in existence. And uh, I'm here to answer any of your questions. It's time for our renewal. We largely serve our residents and their guests. Um, our dining room closes between 7 and 9 p.m. It says on this ABRA fact sheet that we're open until midnight. Most of my residents have three hours of rest under them by that time. But at any rate, we serve the residents who live there. And uh, I, June and I are here to ask for your support so we can have a renewal on our alcohol license. And with that, I'll take any questions. Uh, the only real questions, uh, Paul, are, are, have there been any changes in the uh, license? And I assume there have not been. It's exactly the same. It's just a straight renewal. Yes, sir. Okay. And there haven't been any complaints that you're aware of either. Uh, no. Okay. We've okay. had no, no complaints, no issues with law enforcement. And my residents... Uh, manage to get up to their room and we watch them very closely when it comes to alcohol consumption yeah. so so june you have anything to add nope uh we are we do close at seven we are not open until almost nine uh last call is at seven o'clock and we serve alcohol with just dinner or at happy hour so it's not okay. an open bar okay oh, and john higgins hasn't created any problems <laughs> not recently I'm but I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not allowed to comment. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No. Uh, this is a, a straightforward renewal of the application, renewal of liquor license. And so I would move that we uh, support the, the application. Uh, is there a second? All those in favor? Six zero. And let the record show too that uh, Commissioner Higgins did not participate in the discussion or the vote. Uh, Paul and June, thank you very much. We appreciate it. We appreciate Knollwood too. Uh, it's a real asset in our community and we, we're glad to be able to help whenever we can. You're very welcome. And just so all the commissioners know, we've opened the aperture and folks from Chevy Chase are, are, and your families are welcome to come to Knollwood if you're looking for a senior living community. We have a wonderful community and you're welcome to come talk to our residents at any time. Thank you. At lunch. Yes. And done. have lunch, and Randy, we're going to have a little reception for you. So <laughs> you may have all to right. talk about that. <laughs> all right, thank you okay. all, Randy. Thank I'm you. we're going to go ahead and leave at this time, yes. unless there's any questions sure. for us. No, that that's perfect. Thank yeah, you. I don't see any hands raised, so I think I think we got it. I will. Thank you, ma'am. Them to attendee. Okay, the next item on the agenda is a presentation by Historic Chevy Chase DC on a grant application to restore call boxes in the community. And Commissioner Chang, Connie, you want to take that? Yes, um, uh, I'm just going Chaz, to- Chaz has a little bit of announcement at first, I think. So. Chaz, please, I'm going to elevate um, Ed Hayes uh, while you're talking. 
Yeah, Connie, before you do that, I just wanted to let the audience know, since I know the commissioners do, that since I'm a board member of HCCDC, I've not talked with anybody on the commission about this application, and I'm not going to participate in tonight's discussion or the vote. Thank you. Okay, also, um, there's a hand raise, Lenise uh, Edwards. Um, um, from Council Member Lewis George's office. Yeah, so maybe we didn't get a chance for the public announcements for. Why don't we elevate her now uh, and let her. Yeah, let's do that. If Ed, if you're okay with just holding on. And should I elevate Carl um, as well? Carl, if you want to be elevated, just raise your hand and I will elevate you to panelists uh, when we discuss the application, the grant application. So are you, I will elevate Lynette. Elevate it. Uh, okay. She's. I've, I've just elevated her and I'm gonna elevate Carl and Carl and Ed will just wait for a second. Uh, That's where okay. Did, where did Lenise go though? She, she, should come, she should be coming now. Well, let me try again. I'm here, she said she's here. I'll bring yep. her to panelists. And oh, yeah, there she is. There she here is. She is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hi. Lenise, sorry, I didn't see you earlier. No worries. Uh, good evening, uh, everyone. Thank you for making time for, for me to just um, offer a few words from the council member's office. Uh, first, uh, Commission Respect, thank you so much for everything uh, that you have done uh, for the ward, for your community, and um, specifically with our office. You know, um, I'll just, you know, make a small point and say, when we started our, uh, when the council member was sworn in on January 4th, you know, uh, we had a very hard time, right? We were coming in two days before an insurrection. Uh, they were handing out uh, vaccines for the first time. Uh, we had no transition uh, from the former council member. And so we um, were struggling. And, and what I remember most is, uh, Commissioner, you were um, there to support us, there to lend a hand, there to give us constructive feedback when we needed it. And so I just wanted to um, thank you for everything that you've done um, working with us, for, whether it was lead, lead pipes or Murray or the small area plan, uh, you name it, you were there to offer invaluable insight um, and, and perspective from uh, on behalf of your community. And so I just wanted to thank you for your service uh, and thank you for your partnership. And we are greatly appreciative of it. Thank you. I don't have too much uh, from the council other than, you know, I'm sure you guys know that we've wrapped up our budget session. We did a round of DPR tours where the council member toured uh, every DPR site um, in the war. Thank you, Commissioner Zeldin, for being there and being present and, and advocating uh, for some much needed renovations uh, at Lafayette Pointer. Um, and I know that you guys are going on recess fairly soon. We'll be back in September, uh, ready to offer some updates from the council uh, after what I hope will be a restful and uh, sort of quiet uh, summer. Uh, but happy to answer any questions if you have any for me. Anyone have questions for Lenise? Michael? So Lenise, very few if any of the things that we walk through at Pointer together have been done. Yeah. So it was lovely to have that walk. Yeah. But nothing has come of it. Yeah. Look, I, I, I share in your frustration. We have another uh, site, which I'm sure you're familiar with, Emory Rec, uh, still does not have air. Uh, after our tour, after the, the council member has sent an email, sent a letter, requested follow-up after follow-up uh, with DGS and DPR. And so it is a, um, the council member's frustrated. It is, you know, we, we wanna work with our partners in the executive um, as much as we can, but it's incredibly frustrating when we have to continue to advocate uh, for 
small fixes, um, whether that's at Lafayette Point or larger, um, whether that's AC during the summer. Uh, and so what I can commit to you is to follow up again with DGS and reach out uh, to DPR again um, and continue to push uh, for those uh, fixes for the um, issues that we have on our list and on our letter that we included. Yeah, um, I, was at, I was at Emory last week and they do have now portable air conditioners in parts of the, of the rec center, but it's hardly good. Yeah, that's right. So I'm sorry I don't have a better answer, but we will continue to reach out to DGS. Yeah, it just, it creates so much cynicism that, you know, you say to your constituents, I walk through with council uh, member uh, George, I've been in touch with Tommy Jones and Chris Dwyer yeah. and they, they assure me and then weeks pass and weeks turn to months and everyone says, you know, it's a non-functioning government. Yeah, well, I can assure you the council member will never stop advocating for the fixes in DPR, uh, small and large, uh, and uh, we'll do our part and, you know, we will, see what we can do to get the um, the other side of that piece to do theirs. I'm just, I just, I've been writing to them continuously since we were there. Yeah. And sometimes I get a reply, sometimes I don't get a reply, but I just don't know whether, has the council member written to them? Is, is she aware that nothing has been done? Is, has she been following up with them? This is why I want to be on the tour because oftentimes what happens is the council member with no criticism intended, the council member comes in on their, their meet and greet, and then then they're gone on to other issues, leaving yeah. it to the ANC to deal with it. And I'm just wanting you to know that I'm trying to deal with it. But if you guys could add your voice more loudly and more often, maybe it'll affect the change that we're both in yeah. favor. Commissioner, of. you know, I'm 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 thinking on how much I should share here, but I, I what I want to say is that. Um, the council member in our office, we're not into performative measures, right? We're not just going to go um, come to DP, uh, go to a DPR site to take photos uh, and post on social. We're committed to resolving the issues that you guys have raised. Uh, we have reached out to DGS several times, several times. The council member has requested an, a meeting with uh, the director, uh, and we have not heard back. And so. Okay. It is, That's fine. Yeah. As I said, I'm not criticizing you, but but from my personal standpoint, it would be nice to know to be included as a CC or even a BCC on these emails. So sure. so we can work in tandem. If I don't know what you're doing, I try to include you guys in most of my emails. So um, you know what I'm doing. So vice versa would be helpful. Sure. And what I'll do is I'll forward you the last correspondence or the last email that we sent to um, to DGS. I'm happy to do that. Okay, thank you, Lenise. Thank you. All right, uh, Connie, you wanna take over with regard to the grant application? I should just note too that, that for grant applications, we um, uh, hear the presentation and ask questions and get as much information as we need at one meeting. And then our uh, procedures uh, specify that we can't vote at this meeting, but we will take a vote at our next meeting. So the, the vote on this application will be at our July 11th meeting. Yes, um, if Carl and Ed could, um, if you can turn on your video, that would be very helpful for the recording because anyone who's not in video, um, they just don't show up. And let me, um, uh, with Lenise, let me- I'll, I'll, take, I'll take care of that, Connie, I got it. Okay. So, Hi, Ed, it's nice to see you. I've just spoken to you on the phone. I, 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 it's nice to see you here on video. Um, so uh, Historic Tribute Chase DC has submitted a grant application uh, to uh, the ANC for $2,000 to restore for partial, um, I guess, um, to uh, cover partial costs of the restoration of several call boxes that's in our community. And I don't want to steal their thunder because I would like for them to give some background about these call boxes. The history is so interesting. And also uh, for them to share uh, that they will be working with um, other organizations, though, uh, to be clear, HCCDC is the grantee. And they will be in charge of making sure that that grant um, is 
uh, spent within uh, the 60 day, uh, which is within 60 days after receiving the check from us, which is a rule, and that they will be filing the report. Um, that's uh, important. Um, but let, let Ed or Carl um, share with us the history and then what they intend to do and that they will be working with um, CHART and also uh, Chevy Chase Citizens Association, which will have a name change pretty soon, I hear. Um, so I will, I will um, give the floor to you, Ed, and then I will take it back again when there's some questions from the commissioners and then from the audience. Thank okay. you. Well, I'll start our presentation. Good evening, everyone. My name is Edward Hayes. I'm a Chevy Chase resident. I live in the 3200 block of Morrison Street. And thank you very much for the introduction, Commissioner Chang. And it's a pleasure to get to see you on video as well. Um, I'm here to talk about the background for an application that has been submitted. Uh, there is an effort that's been started called the call, Chevy Chase Call Box Project. It involves several community organizations, including the CHART, organization, which is the organization of Chevy Chase artists, the Chevy Chase Community Association, of which I was president oh, a generation ago, and I'm glad to be working with Robbie Gordon, who's the current president of CCCA, and District Bridges. Um, the project is to restore the call boxes that are all around our neighborhood. And I'm sure you have seen some of them as you have traveled about. The call boxes are fire alarm boxes and police uh, alarm boxes. They were erected in the late 1800s, many starting as early as the 1870s. And they were a very active part of our community. Uh, the, when they were put up, um, it was very difficult to notify the fire departments, the few that existed, of uh, blazes in the neighborhood. And unfortunately, in those days, fire, how, uh, fires in homes were, were not uh, uncommon. So the fire boxes were the firemen would go to the box, or actually the, uh, someone in the neighborhood would go to the box and uh, the way they were erected, you could uh, put in a signal that is very much like um, a Morse code signal. Uh, the police box were pretty much the same. The police boxes came later, um, but they were used by the police on patrol in the neighborhood and they could call in to have a paddy wagon come, come down. Those boxes were in use until about the 1970s when self uh, signals became common, and um, they were, were removed in some sections of the city, but as you know, they were not removed in all sections, and they have been um, ignored. They have been able to rust in place, and they have become eyesores. Uh, we believe that they can be an important part of our community. They can be attractive. They can be restored, lacquered. They could have art put on them. And in some cases, in those boxes, we can put art inside. There's a lot of variety that we can have with those boxes. Um, we have sent out a survey to the community and the results we got back were very promising. They're, People in our neighborhood think that those boxes can add charm to our neighborhood and people have volunteered to help us. We need a lot of people, a lot of muscle work goes into restoring those boxes. Uh, and we think that it's, it could be a way of bringing some unity to different neighborhoods. You know, we talk about Chevy Chase as one big community, but we have a lot of little neighborhoods in our, in our community and uh, a, an alarm, a box, a call box on a street corner in one neighborhood could be addressed differently than in another neighborhood. Um, and we would like to take this opportunity to get that kind of conversation going in the neighborhoods. It brings out the history of the neighborhood. One of the things we've already done is develop a sample list of, of important events in the neighborhood, 
significant people in the neighborhood, interesting homes in the neighborhood. And on some of these boxes, there will be pictures showing the history of our community. Um, you, you all are people who know the neighborhood, but we've had so many civil rights figures that have been important in, in the history. Um, we've had the Tuskegee Airmen, we've had General Pershing lived in our neighborhood. So there are a lot of things that we can bring up. So uh, we think we've started to make some traction in putting this together. Not only have we developed this list, but we have selected a contractor for the first call box renovation. Uh, the name of this contractor is the Old Quaker contractor. Um, they, the Old Quaker contractors have been around a long time and they have experience of working with other neighborhoods in um, resurrecting call boxes. Uh, we think we're very fortunate in having a group that has experience. We'd also like to involve some other groups because uh, the, we're not certain at this point how many call boxes we will uh, be able to restore. Uh, it's, some of it depends upon funding, uh, but uh, the old Quaker will have a shot at the first one, and then we can have perhaps some community or uh, contractors involved. Uh, the, we have also been able to work closely with the chart organization. We have a lot of artists in our neighborhood, and you, you, I think you've seen their events from time to time. And uh, we are putting out a call for artists to participate, and uh, we think that we will get, get a lot of interest there. So the first goal is to raise funds, and uh, we would like to uh, have the support of the ANC. We have filed a, a grant application. We've asked for $2,000. That $2,000 would go for our first call box. Uh, after we, will, we have raised other funds and we will continue raising funds um, because we would like to go around the neighborhood as much as possible. Uh, there, we think that the first one should be at Connecticut Avenue and Morrison Street. Uh, the, the corner there is, is a pivotal part of our community. Uh, everyone goes by there at some point, whether they're going to a restaurant or to CVS or to Safeway. That, that call box would get a lot of attention and hopefully bring some um, uh, pride and uh, be a starting point for uh, us able to do other things. So the $2,000 would be we'd be able to start right away and we would be able to uh, use those funds all within the 60 days and um, we will make a report back to the ANC and we will keep going from there. Uh, I, the application has a lot more information and I think I may have rambled on enough at this point. I'll give you a chance to ask any questions you may have about what we're trying to do. Except, I don't know, call to you if you want to add anything at this time. Call this president of the historic Chevy Chase of DC. And um, working together with Call, we um, came up with uh, an inspiration for working with others on this project. Call? Well, thanks, Sid. Uh, actually, I'm not going to say anything because you've done it all, all already. I'm just here to respond to any subsidiary points that might come up. Great. Um, Ed, do you think you can um, share with, uh, with the commissioners as well as with who's listening um, the, the breakdown of that $2,000 grant? Uh, it well, is an application, but maybe speak a little bit more about it. Yeah, most of that would go toward the actual construction work on the call box. Uh, the boxes have decades of rust that must be removed. Um, and the, some of the boxes are shut so that the doors don't open. And, um, and some of them will leave the doors closed and some if we can open the doors and put some art inside, we'll do that. Uh, and the first one uh, is a matter of taking off the rust, uh, putting on protective coating, uh, painting, and then putting lacquer over the paint. And, um, then putting uh, the artwork on on the on the uh, call box, so we'd have to paint. Uh, have I think it'll cost about twelve hundred dollars for the construction work. 
Uh, the art material itself would cost about $300 to take special kind of paint to go on these boxes to protect them from the rain and, and storms. Uh, and uh, we would like to have uh, plaques on the box to explain um, what the artwork may be or how this box in this neighborhood, what it saw, what, what, did it see evidence of uh, something that uh, important? Um, the, so we would have a bronze plaque put on that will cost another $500. So that's pretty, that would take pretty much all of the 2000, uh, so which would not allow us uh, funds for other boxes. So uh, the organization's uh, district bridges uh, has uh, put, is putting up $4,000. Uh, HCCDC is putting up a thousand. The uh, Chevy Chase Community Association is putting up a thousand, uh, 2000, sorry. Uh, and uh, the Little Beast Restaurant is putting up a thousand. Robert Gordon himself is putting up a thousand. Uh, so we are actively raising funds, uh, Commissioner Chang, if that addresses what you're saying. It does. Thank you. I'm going to go to uh, Commissioner Gore. You have the first question. Your hand was raised. Um, so I just have a couple of comments and a question. One, thank you guys for doing this. I love the call boxes throughout the city. My husband was a young police officer here in D.C. in the 70s and still talks about <laughs> using that call box. Um, so every time I see it, I cannot help for thinking of him, you know, as a young officer serving a city and, and using those call boxes. So I am really grateful that we're restoring them. I, I think this should be a citywide effort. I would love to see the city pay for it <laughs> to get them all restored. Um, and the other comment I had, I don't know if you guys, um, and I know you probably have your design together. So I did want to ask you a little bit about that. But when I was in um, campaigning in Ward 1, I don't know if you guys have seen the call box restorations in Ward 1. They are amazing. Um, and they depict the history of the Indian tribes in that area. Mm. Um, I can take, go back and take a picture and I, you know, just to show it because Ed, when you were talking about artwork inside the box, that's how theirs are. And it depicts Native American scenes right here in DC in Ward One inside the call box, and it is it is beautiful. Um, so I'll be happy to go back, you know, to those sites and take a few pics and send them to you guys. I'm sure what you're doing is going to be amazing as well. But if you haven't seen them, I'll share those with you. I have well, I have looked at call boxes for years and I like you, I, I just enjoy them. Uh, and I'm not sure that I've seen the ones in Ward 1, but now I'll make it a point to do that. And I'd like to follow up with you and have some more conversation with you. Oh, absolutely. Uh, one of the things I left out was, uh, you mentioned that your, if that, that your husband? Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and the what I left out was that we are aiming for a dedication of at least the first call box on September 17th, which is going to be Chevy Chase Day, uh, sponsored by the CCPA. And um, I might want to talk with you about having someone speak who can talk about actually having used it. So uh, that would be stand by for that. <laughs> and he likes to talk. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Thank you. Yeah, uh, you, I'll put, you got my information. Uh, I will get it offline later. Okay. Thank you. Great. Okay, so Commissioner Gosselin, you're next. Yeah, just so I understand the sort of magnitude of the project and the potential magnitude of the cost. So how many call boxes are there to be restored throughout the RANC? And is $2,000 uh, a box kind of an what you think is going to be an average price? $2,000 is probably what, an average, but um, each box, I'm hoping each box is going to be different. So the artwork is going to be different. Some art is going to be more complicated than others. Uh, some boxes are have less wear than others. Uh, so it's, it, it is hard to say, give a number for each one. Um, and 
we we are surprised that we come up with a number of Karl Barkas in the area, and I am still not convinced that we have the exact number now. I think we have 12 to 15 boxes, and it would be a stretch to think that we can do all of them. Um, but uh, I think I'd like to see us do no, no less than six to eight, because uh, we can spread them around. Um, but, um, you know, there's, there's money is tight and money's going to go for a lot of different things. So uh, if we have the funds, we'll do them all. But um, we don't, you know, don't know how long, how pr practical that would be. Okay, uh, Commissioner Higgins, you're next. Uh, thank you. I must admit, I was not familiar with these too much at all. And now that you've enlightened me, uh, it's, it's pretty interesting. I don't want you to increase your cost that much with your bronze plaques, but I'm interested in the communications part of this. If you put a phrase or a sentence or two about what these, how these things work like miniature telegraphs mm -hmm. in the age of the internet, that might be an interesting aspect to bring to people's attention. So that's just one element. And I would also like to thank you for updating your application uh, with your 990 reference. That was really pretty out of date. And then I thought it was appropriate. So uh, since I'm the treasurer and the money guy here, I want to make sure everything's in order. So thanks for, thanks for doing that. Yes, I want to echo uh, what John was saying that, yes, we really do appreciate you address, addressing some of our preliminary comments. And um, it is the case, though, that we're all now going to look at call boxes. Uh, I just saw the one that was on Chevy Chase Parkway. Um, and I think it was like Morrison or something like that. I was like, oh, there's one. And um, I'm very curious about uh, what it's going to look like. Uh, do you know when you'll have a design ready? I mean, you're going to start soon. Once you get the check, I, I assume. And then it'll be ready by Chevy Chase Day, which is September 17th. Um, will you be able to share with us at one of our subsequent meetings, perhaps, uh, what the design might look like uh, or something, or show us yeah. a website certainly. where we can direct people? That would be really nice. Yes, certainly. Um, and I really do like John's comment because I think for kids, it's really nice for them to see the history, or understand the history. Like, what is this about and what was it used uh, before? That's really exciting. Um, so if there's some way to do that, that would be really cool. One box that I will just point out to you, because we all have traveled on this corner and may not have noticed it because sometimes you're just walking fast, but right on the corner of McKinley and Broad Branch, there's a, a lovely call box that features the Broad Branch market. Uh, so make a point of looking at that one as a sample of what can be done. Now, got to tell you, that one probably had more money spent on it than we're going to spend on our individual boxes, but it's, it's, it's a sample. Okay, thank you. And Ed, do you, um, it, since it's called Chevy Chase Call Box Project or something like that, do you have a website that people can go to in case they want to contribute uh, money to this project? Um, we are, the HCCDC is taking the lead on this. Uh, I am chairing the effort and um, we will uh, make uh, information available on the HCCDC website. Okay, so does anyone in the audience have any questions? If you do, um, please raise your hand and I will, uh, or, or, or put in a question in the Q&A. Uh, Robert, uh, I will elevate you um, for you to speak. should be joining us pretty soon. There you are. Is Robert, that Robert? Oh, Robert Gordon, good. Yeah, yeah Robert, good. can you put your video on? Robert, you are uh, muted. Um, thank you. Okay. Um, Ed said pretty much all of it, 
we've been working very closely. Um, the uh, just a few additional points. The first one is that um, the art we don't have the designs yet. Um, Chart is going to go out with an announcement very soon to the artists in the area to come up with concepts, and those will be judged um, by a panel uh, comprised of people from Chart and CCCA and um, uh, Historic Chevy Chase. So um, once that happens, we'll have a better feeling. Uh, we hope that we get maybe three for the first three. The first three are on Connecticut Avenue. And uh, so that then at that point, we'll have drawings or we'll have images or we'll have some things that we can uh, really look at. Um, and uh, yeah, so, so that's how the art will be determined, the colors of the boxes and so on and so forth. Wonderful. Okay, I think Teresa, uh, you raised your hand, I've elevated you. Could you um, unmute yourself as well as turn on your video so we can see you? Oh, I can't hear you. Robert, while we're waiting for that, it occurs to me that uh, talking about websites, that information that we have on the HCCDC website can be shared on the uh, CCCA one as well. But we can talk about that. Yeah, we'll, we'll put that up soon. Teresa, I'm sorry, we cannot hear you. I'm not sure what the issue is. <laughs> Maybe she can put her question in a chat. Exactly. I think there's something happening with the, her laptop maybe. Okay, I think she's um, disappeared. <laughs> I'm gonna wait because uh, before I make a move here, um, see if she, she, yeah, she's no longer here. Um, for the, in the interest of time, I'm going to move that. Oh, we don't, no, actually, no, no, we're no, done. No. We're, we don't we're have done. anything yep. till July 11th. So I move that we talk about it July 11th. <laughs> there's, there's no votes. Um, thank you, Ed. It's so nice uh, for you to come and speak to us. Thank you, Carl, and also Robert. Um, seems like a really great project for the community. I'm really, really happy about this. Thank and, you for the uh, opportunity of addressing you. Yes, thank you Appreciate for um, taking the time. Thank, thank you all. Okay. Okay. Um, the last substantive item on the agenda today uh, deals with the small area plan. And uh, we're gonna be discussing the creation of the Standing Committee on Zoning Design and Development, as well as a report on the um, Office of Planning's response to the commission's uh, May 9th resolution and a discussion and possible vote on testimony at the council's um, July 5th roundtable hearing. Um, and Peter, you wanna begin this discussion? Sure. Uh, I think that the, uh, the proposal for a standing committee on this subject um, should be uncontroversial in our less than two year term. We've devoted more than half of our resolutions to issues involving zoning design and development. Um, and um, given uh, what we hope happens and what the city hopes happens, um, these are gonna be issues that are gonna be front and center for this uh, ANC for years to come. Um, in, cope, in trying to deal with the draft small area plan, I had a crash course in the complexities of zoning and not just the law, but what practice is in this city. And it takes a considerable amount of expertise and a considerable amount of networking. And so I think it would be useful that we delegate this to some uh, subset of ourselves uh, and some residents 
to act as sort of our uh, initial study group uh, and advisors on this uh, subject. Um, uh, I have, I drafted the uh, resolution. I've taken feedback uh, from both John and Randy and I'm happy to include uh, John's proposal as modified by Randy. So that's the, um, that's the uh, proposal for the standing committee. Let me use the occasion of talking about this just to report to you um, about uh, uh, what I see as the Office of Planning's response to date uh, to our May 9th resolution. Um, I think that uh, it, the, the response uh, shows us why we need to have a committee that has an ongoing relationship uh, 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 with OP and the administration uh, and expertise, independent expertise in the subject. Um, the uh, Office of Planning uh, essentially took almost no, none of our, rec of, of your recommendations and the majority recommendations uh, in the resolution. Um, we asked that we sit at the table uh, and drafting a special, th th they did agree to have a special zoning area for the Connecticut, Upper Connecticut Avenue commercial quarter, and that's important. And they did agree to take a uh, recommendation 4.7 out for debate that's gonna be coming in a few years. Both of these things are very important. They did not agree, although they left the door open to our sitting at the table in the drafting of this special zoning area. I think we need to take them up on that uh, uh, because I think that's where a lot of the, the real nitty gritty rules that are gonna determine what development looks like along the avenue are gonna be made. They did not take us up on um, uh, our what we asked in terms of affordable housing. Um, uh, they basically, at least as I read the revamp of the draft small area plan now in final form and before the council, um, they basically said they're going to lean heavily on their traditional tools, IZ, inclusionary zoning and inclusionary zoning plus. I think as troubling is that they, they for, for things that would just be, um, uh, shows of respect for how involved we've been. They didn't take us up on those either. Um, we've been a deeply, this commission before I got here and since has been deeply involved in thinking, trying to think through what we're gonna do at the community center library. And we said repeatedly during our conversations about this plan, we, we don't show up uh, in that section of the plan. They, it's, it seemed like a no cost, um, uh, uh, no sweat, uh, 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 show of respect to us if they added, added us, they did not. Um, uh, they, we talked about uh, this issue of buying up naturally occurring affordable housing as one that needed to be thought about more and in any case was not uh, something that was dealt with in the planning process for the commercial zone. We asked that that be put aside. They not only did not put it aside, they strengthened the language. They say they're gonna pursue it. So I, I think that um, as we talk about uh, the testimony Randy is gonna give uh, at uh, the council uh, round table July 5th, and I should say as an aside, I'm gonna testify as an individual commissioner, making very clear I'm representing myself and not uh, the commission. Um, uh, I, I just think we ought to keep in mind uh, this, the, the, what I see as the record here of a response so far uh, by the Office of Planning. In any case, uh, for those, both those reasons, I think we need to set up this uh, uh, standing committee and I would like to be on it as a co-chair. I mean, um, I haven't talked to Connie, but the obvious other person to, to co-chair it is uh, Connie, uh, but I, you know, uh, it's up to, up to the commissioners, other commissioners. I, I think the model of the standing committee on um, racial and social equity has worked pretty well, including during a tough time um, when Lisa was uh, running for council. Uh, so I think the idea of co-chairs from the commission is a good one. And I think also Randy's caution um, in talking about John's amendment to this uh, is one that's important to keep in mind, which is that these standing committees 
and, and temporary committees too, task force, are very clearly, as laid out in our bylaws, are very clearly just advisory to the commission. They're not independent um, centers of power, if you will. So uh, with that, I propose that we, uh, we uh, put this on the floor and then if there's discussion, you want me to answer questions, um, that's fine. Yeah. Just, I'd have a second. If you make the motion, yeah, we'll get a second and then we can just- I, I make a motion that we uh, 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 create a standing committee on zoning design and development as laid out in the resolution I've sent around to the commissioners. Is there a second? Okay, any discussion? John? Well, I, I, as you saw my, unfortunately, and I apologize for my later sort of last minute comments, I endorse this heartily. Um, I think it gives both the ANC and the community uh, a lot of leverage down the road. And we're certainly signaling both to the OP and to the city council that we are, we are players. We continue to want to be players and we're making a some an extraordinary effort um, to be uh, positive, positively engaged in the process. So I support this entirely, and I support Randy's revision of my proposal. Any other questions? Uh, Chaz. You're muted, Chaz. One of the reasons that this is important, I think, is reflected in what happened with the small area plan itself, where we worked on this for two years and we had from OP some very generic language and vague drawings and general talk about community vision and stuff. And we didn't see the actual small area plan till 60 days before comments were due. It's a very short amount of time to get on top of an amazing ton of detail. And if any sort of a uh, special zone is developed the same way. Um, all the decisions get made and we're supposed to comment on the full encyclopedia at the last moments. It's not the kind of engagement that I think will inform the community about what's being developed and inform us as well. Um, and let, o let OP or whoever's doing this stay in tune with the community. And so I, and I don't, um, you know, we aren't the experts in zoning That's what and planning, that's what they are. Uh, but if they operate in ice in the dark um, without staying in touch with the community, I don't think it will come to come to a good end. Michael. So I'm sorry to be confused. It's um, it's a problem I've suffered for for most of my life. But we we are suggesting that we establish a committee to participate in the OP planning process when we have been denied the opportunity to participate in the planning process. So- uh, I would disagree with that. But. Well, we, we asked, as far as I remember our, the, the reply is that we asked to have a seat at the table at the earliest stage of the process. And that was effectively declined. And I guess what I'm asking, I'm not, speaking against this i'm just asking for clarification which is it's uh, is there it seems like there's a sort of a cart before the horse um in in the sense that don't we want to have assurance from op or whomever that that we are um going to be uh, have it going to have a seat at the table and then we tell them after that that this is this is how we plan to participate in the process uh, I'm just, I'm, again, I'm confused. We're setting up a, we're setting up a committee to, to participate in a process that we've been largely excluded from as I, as I see it. Lisa, Lisa. You can tell me where I'm wrong, but that's how I am reading it so far. Um, I just wanted to ask what's the, um, what procedure, and I know I've been a little out of the loop with this, for recruiting a membership of the committee. How large is the committee gonna be? Um, are you drawing from particular expertise? And my major concern is the balance on the committee. Well, I, uh, I, I think I was gonna follow your uh, uh, template in how to recruit people, set a certain amount of time, ask for volunteers, interview them. I think 
I mean, I'm happy to, there was some debate. I, I wrote it as a five person committee, um, but uh, mainly because I don't think there are gonna be a lot of people, a lot of takers, but um, uh, we can expand it if you want. Um, uh, I think in terms of balance, uh, part of the balance is gonna be who we put on the committee. Um, and that will be guidance for the, for the balance. Uh, so, uh, and you will notice at the very end of the, the resolution, procedurally, I simply, uh, shamelessly borrow from the standing committee uh, resolution. I mean, everything about the rest of it is borrowed from that resolution. Um, let me, could I just, Connie, for just, let me just address Michael's uh, comment. Um, Michael, you know that um, I haven't been wild about the process either, but um, uh, we're, we're, I think there are two arguments for nonetheless, um, I think there are three arguments for nonetheless going forward with creating a standing committee. One, we've learned from experience, it takes a lot of expertise. We aren't going to be the experts in with standing as similar, uh, you know, as with as much knowledge as OP or the, the Office of Zoning or so forth. But it's very useful to build up our expertise in this. Two, um, we can't take our bat and ball and go home. I mean, <laughs> that, that, that's not representing the community. And so uh, we need to do that. And three, Although OP, although a lot of the documents that OP has produced since the May 9th resolution has, basic, has said OP is going to draft this special zone, the way they changed, the, they revised the language, again, at the, in the very last paragraphs of the now final small area plan, um, uh, uh, they, they, they in effect opened the door, a little at least, to our being involved in the process of writing this. They said um, the creation, they say to implement relevant provisions of the, the CCSAP, a new zone should be created. Um, the creation of a new zone models from a planning effort like the CCSAP, and this is the, the uh, OP's language, is typically drafted and proposed by OP. Community groups also have an important role to play in all the zoning commission cases where the ANC is given great weight. So they've said here that typically they draft it, they present it to the office of, they present it to the zoning commission. There would be a hearing, a 30, there would be a 30 day comment hearing, a hearing, and then the zoning commission would act. What I tried to do when I drew up the, the, the proposal, uh, the resolution that, that uh, did not find favor with this commission is say that Many of the issues that we, that, that we were not able to, we did not have time to deal with in the draft plan will have to be revisited in the drafting of this special zone. And so we ought to be at the table. And uh, maybe I'm grasping at straws, but um, they didn't say categorically, no, OP will do this and no, you guys can't be involved but uh, during the comment period. So let's take them up on it. You know, let, let's set up the mechanism to get involved. I mean, you know, you get knocked down, you get up. Uh, that's what we're trying to do here. So, um. Annie, um, I I want to I want to say a few words. One is that there's there's two different things happening here. Like the standing committee is not necessarily it's really to uh, to give us some expertise, like to to, to have more eyeballs. Uh, when something comes forward. In the final SAP draft on page 27, we're actually added into recommendation 2.2. You know, recommendation 2.2, it was 2.1. 2.1 is new. That's the creation of the new zone. And they actually added us to that. And for the creation of the new zone, it was just OP. So two things are happening here. One is the standing committee that we're talking about. One is the testimony to the council. Yes, so the testimony to the council is to say to the council, we still would like to be in this in this earlier process when the special zone is being formulated. We're asking for that. And the council can add that language in their own resolution. That's so that we're going to talk about in a second. On the standing committee issue, it is not necessarily for us to put this thing together so that we can do X, Y, Z. It is that if a, a PUD comes up, if something comes up, we can go to the committee and say, we have some questions, you know, can you help us? We would like some research done, can you help us? It's an, it's an advisory group 
And it doesn't play at the table. We're at the table. Okay, the ANC is at the table. So um, I think we've had a lot of zoning issues come up. We're not, we're not the experts. We're learning fast. You know, Randy mentioned in the beginning, we all have had to come up to speed. Um, but that standing committee will help us, uh, I think. And um, I don't believe it needs to be large. I do believe it needs to have experts. Okay, this is, this is critical. Okay, because the community will still be involved in anything that before we put a resolution together, when we discuss things, we're gonna absolutely open it up to the community. What is the value of a standing committee of this kind? We need experts who have been involved, they know they can look at something and give us some guidance. So I think it is important to just say that, and it doesn't necessarily have to be solely uh, for the community center, let's say that whole renovation with the library and affordable housing, it, something else could come up. It could be a PUD, it could be a, other things, and we can have someone to talk to. So I just wanna make that uh, clear. Con? Well, Con, Con is right. We have to, have to make sure we're not convoluting two aspects here. I think on the on the on the committee itself, you know, five may be small, eleven may be too large. We could put some parameters in there, maybe no more than seven members or a minimum of five or something like that. Um, but I, I do think it's necessary, uh, both as a a demonstration of the ANC's continuing interest, as well as Connie's comments about getting additional resources. Uh, for expertise to help us out as we go along go along this route. Um, as I mentioned just in my, my brief memo, uh, uh, and Connie kind of mentioned it too, this gets more back more to the testimony, but it's also something that the committee could pursue uh, going along. First, maybe we need to clarify from OP and clarifying among ourselves, what do we mean having getting a seat at the table and where in that process of developing the zone or whatever it is, we we would like to be. Would we like to be to their first organizational meeting when they when they do this? I mean, what are what are the legal processes here? Jess mentioned the danger of just having something dumped on our lap for 30 days to to respond. I think I think we need to explore those issues with with OP in terms of how what are the steps, what's the time frame, you know, how can we uh, be aware without Perhaps uh, interfering with the normal normal procedures. I think some. So I think asking OP to talk to us about that and to get some clarification is a, is a good thing, and we can include that in our in our testimony. But I'm also encouraged by the report itself. Uh, it is pretty clear that the Civic Core is is the keystone to all of this. It's almost on every page of the. Of the report, it's a big deal in the Rock Creek Rock Creek West housing document, and that's the piece that OP wants to shoot at first. I think it's the piece the mayor wants to shoot at first. I think that will be quite revealing as to how this whole process is going. And when they talk about that, they put the they put the ANC along with the Public Space Committee and the Zoning Board as equal partners. In the in, in the in constructing the RFP for that initial exploration of the Civic Core, I think that's a pretty good signal that they are making an effort to include us at an early level and at a significant level. So if that goes well, that could bode well for, for the whole rest of the process. So and they and they also mentioned us in other contexts as being part of the public process. So you know. I think there's been a learning curve on both parts. I think as Peter said, they, they've opened the door a little bit or we, we consider it in opening the door. Let's open that door and let's walk through it and let's, let's cooperate with these people. Um, I, I see it's a, it would be a, a squandering of our both legal and, and community obligation to walk away or to put this in the context of some kind of condition, conditional approval. Uh, that, that, that's sort of a half-hearted thing. And I think it's a little bit contradictory to try to establish a committee on the one hand and propose a, a conditional approval on the other. Either we're in or we're out. And I think having the committee is a, is a great signal that we're in. We're in with both feet and we're going to continue to be in. 
Peter? Um, I will uh, reserve my comments on um, John's assessment of the report. I just say that the issue of, uh, uh, of uh, conversations with OP about how the, the, the drafting, what it would mean to sit at the table and how the drafting would go is, uh, is a clear thing that this committee um, uh, would be involved in, in working out with OP. I mean, and indeed, uh, OP and some of their comments to the their responses to the uh, to the uh, May 9th resolution said that the creation of uh, such a such a, a standing committee uh, would be absolutely appropriate uh, uh, in terms of um, implementing this plan. I, I have to say that in the course of doing the research for uh, my ill-fated uh, resolution, I mean, I, I learned a good deal about some of the other special zones. You know, this dates back before the 2016 zoning code rewrite, but the, 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 the H Street overlay was, was in large measure written by community leaders uh, working with OP. Uh, now, you know, you may think the H Street is uh, too intensively developed, but compared to what that, that is, a, that is a lively living community where there was not one or there was a real, you know, and that is the work of a, of a coalition of local leaders and organizations with the city. Um, and so there's, there's precedent for this. We're, we're not trying to, trying to intrude into some arcane area that normal citizens like us just don't intrude in. There's plenty of precedent for uh, local, for ANCs and local leaders to be involved at the very beginning of the process. By the way, uh, the, uh, the, you know, I think at H Street, the, 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 the community group that, uh, that led for the community ended up turning themselves into a development company. Who knows what will come of it, huh? Um, I, I just want to make a few comments, but kind of go ahead. Okay, we should take a vote on this, though. So go, go ahead and whatever, whatever your comments. What I was going to say was, um, you know, Peter, I would, I think if we can, um, for the, for the standing committee, if we can just add a few of those, you know, bullets about like what John was mentioning, minimum, maximum, but who, like the, the makeup of it and how, um, that would be very, you know, very helpful. Um, and, and I think that, uh, I just want us to be uh, clear in the in the rationale uh, uh, part. If we're not clear uh, that it is it is really for us to have a committee of advisors to us when these issues that are kind of complex and difficult for us to be able to use them, you know, as a um, in that way. Uh, and I and I I don't have time right now to look at it if if it's there, but I think we no. should just you know make that happen. I, I think I'd cite the. Uh... The, the very passages from the bylaws that make clear that these standing committees and temporary committees created by the AMC are advisory only. Yeah. Um, and um, I'm happy to do the, the range of membership. I'm happy to do the ensure expertise. Um, and I've taken, in terms of the, 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 the mission, uh, there's gonna be a fourth bullet that's going to be a Randy modified John proposal that okay. says we're interfacing with OP. Okay. So, I mean, I, I didn't, I haven't moved around a, a V2 of this, but I will. Um, okay. Thank you. Okay. I, I want to just wrap this up. Uh, I, in responding to Michael's original uh, concerns about getting the court cart before the horse, we're going to need this committee regardless of what happens. Um, because even if, you know, I don't think this is likely to happen, but even if the OP were to ignore us completely and then just file something with the zoning commission as a new zone, we're going to need this committee then. We're going to need it for lots of things and including the civic core. So we need this committee established now so we're going to be ready. Um, and it really is sort of independent of whatever role we're going to have in the SAP. And we'll discuss that in a second. Um, Michael, if it's quick, I want to go ahead and have a have, uh, call a vote on this. So when I read the resolution for the standing committee, my understanding of it was that it was primarily being created for us to use in relationship to the SAP. 
So my comments relate to this cart before the horse comment of mine is that I view us as having been largely excluded from the SAP process, that I understood this committee was to be a committee to liaison principally in respect of the, the SAP process. And so I'm wondering why we were creating committee to liaison with a process from which we've been largely excluded. If what you're saying, Randy, is even if we are excluded from the small area plan process, even if we don't have a seat at the table, over time, issues will arise that require a committee to advise us. Um, I've got no problem with having a committee advise us, but my understanding why I said what I said was that I, my understanding for that which triggered the request for this committee is to participate in the, in, in the small area planning process. And my, as I respect fully requested changes to the testimony, I think that we were largely left out and our initial resolution said, we support subject to the following conditions. Those conditions weren't largely met. So what are, what are we saying what message are we, my question is, what I asked you on the phone earlier today, Randy, what message are we saying? We say, we write a resolution saying, subject to these conditions, we, we support. Then those conditions aren't met. And then we say, well, we're setting up a, a standing committee to work with you and, and never mind about our preconditions. That's the, what- The standing committee is gonna, as I understand it, and Peter can correct me if I'm wrong, but the standing committee is gonna have things to do uh, certainly in terms of implementing, not planning this small area plan, but in implementing the small area plan, it's gonna have plenty to do, but it's gonna have other things too. Zoning issues are gonna come up all the time. And that that standing committee, I think is is, is important. Well, I'm not, but I'm not disagreeing with that, Randy. I'm not, I'm not disagreeing with the need for a general standing committee. I'm just saying is that, as I understood it, this the, the impetus for the standing committee was to participate in the small area planning process. Now no, it seems the, to have a broader okay. mandate. Let's, the, let's, the planning process is done. Though. Yes. The planning process is done. We're talking about implementation now. Same, no, we're it's the same, more, we're, same thing. More, no, it isn't. It's not the same thing. It's, it's, no, the, it's the, not. The SAP planning process is complete. We were talking about creation of a new special zone. That's what we were talking about and trying to be at the table sooner. All right, that's, that's, let's just be very clear on that. And other things we asked for, we got, okay? We didn't get every single thing, you know, but we got most things and we got added, as I mentioned earlier, to recommendation 2.2, which we didn't even ask for, okay? But they put us in there. So I do not believe that the final SAP is, um, is not responsive to us. I believe that there's pushback because they are an independent agency and they this is how they do things and they don't really want people to necessarily be, be in it. But Peter has said they have allowed others and we're gonna ask the council to say, hey, there's one more try. Please get us in earlier than everything is, the special, the special zone is done, drafted, and then it goes in front of the zoning commission and then we come and say something. We wanna be earlier in that process. So I disagree with you, Michael, I'm sorry. And I, and I, and I think we have to be very really clear about that the planning is over. We're just I, talking about the special zone. I, I use the word planning. I, 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 I just wanna be clear so I, I, no one else is confused. No, I understand that, but I, I didn't mean to use the word, I, I meant implementation. I just used the word planning. I understand that. I, I offer one other thing. I promise be real quick, Randy. One other thing that this committee could do. So it turns out Chaz and I both took the advanced zoning course uh, uh, for the ANC in the last week. And it turns out that ANCs have the right freestanding to propose zoning districts. We can write our own. We don't like theirs, we'll write our own. So there's something we might do. There's plenty of stuff to do uh, in this area. And my God, if you look over the last 18 months, what we have done, how many times these issues uh, have come up. I think the evidence historically is that there's plenty to do. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I, I call the question and let's make clear that what we're voting on here is the resolution to establish the standing committee. Yes. We're gonna talk in just a moment about the testimony. Yes. And there's, there are two separate things here. Yes. But I call the question on the resolution. Uh, all those in favor of adopting the resolution, seven zero. But that was a affirmative, right, Michael? Michael, are you affirmative? 
you're yes. muted. You're muted. You're muted, Michael. Yes, I'm voting for it because it will have broader application than um, the SAP process. As the SAP process, I still stand that we we got screwed. <laughs> that's that's okay. all in the past. Seven, we're, zero, working, we're done. We're, we're moving working forward. on the future. Okay, speaking of the future. Have a second? Yes. Okay. Pardon? Did we have a second, Randy? Yes, we did have a second. Yeah, yeah that was a long time ago. Yeah. 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 Who, who, who was the second? Let's just. Again. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Seven zero is the vote then. Okay. Uh, now, let's talk about the, the testimony, which I, I drafted, and several people have made contributions to changes, most all of which I have accepted. Um, I, I feel, I think Connie uh, agrees with this, and I think John agrees with this, um, perhaps others as well, that um, although the, the Office of Planning gave us what is basically an institutional response to our May 9th um, resolution, I think they did make a, a lot of changes, including some that are not mentioned in their uh, June 3rd response to us, uh, that are uh, very helpful and that are that indicate a bigger role for the ANC. Um, there are some things that they did not embrace that we suggested. Um, one was with regard to infrastructure issues, which we've raised a number of times before, and we will continue to raise in the future. But they've given us at least uh, an opening to address those issues. And the, the comprehensive plan also in, addresses those issues in some respects, not as much as we would like. But we'll continue to work on those. And my view is that this is the start of a, a, a lengthy process now. We've, we, the planning now is done. Now we've got to go ahead and implement this thing. And it's very important, I think, that we continue to be strongly involved in this, that we continue to be strongly uh, pushing forward for the things that we think are important for our community. And they include things like the affordable housing, for instance. And despite the fact that they didn't say, okay, yes, we're gonna embrace your uh, goals and what you su suggested as the, uh, the optimal outcome, they did say, these are the floors. They said IZ is a floor. They said for district properties, 20 to 30% is the floor. We can do better than that. And we'll continue to push to do better than that. And we'll continue to push for uh, ultra low income housing as well, not just minimally affordable housing. So all of those are issues that are still open on the table for us to be working on. And as we get involved in the development of the civic core, for instance, you know, those issues are gonna get fleshed out and we're gonna have the opportunity then to make a real impact on it, I think. And I think it's also imperative for us then at this point to, to tell the commission, tell the council rather, which all of this is in the hands of the council now. Yep. Um, it's no longer in, in OP's bailiwick. But we should tell the council, here are the ways we think you can contribute to this process and make it better for us. Make make it absolutely clear in your resolution that the ANC needs to be involved directly at the beginning of the process in consultation. We're not dictating anything. We'll never be able to dictate anything, but in consultation with OP. And I think they're gonna go along with that. I think the council will go along with this. If we talk to Mary Che and we talk to Janice Lewis George and maybe some other council members who we have uh, good relationships with, you know, I think they'll make these changes for us. And so I think this is important to continue to indicate, as Peter said earlier, and others have said as well, that the ANC has been involved in this from the beginning. We initiated this process. We started it. There would not be a small area plan if it weren't for the ANC. And so this is something we are we feel extraordinarily strongly about and we are going to be there no matter what and it doesn't make any difference what the council or op ultimately says we're going to be involved in it um and we're going to be banging on their door the way we always have 
and we will be telling them what we think the community needs. So I think this testimony needs to be positive in that respect. And that's why I, I'm not willing to support something that says we're going to withdraw our support for the SAP or we're going to oppose the SAP if we don't get our way. I don't think that's productive. And I think we can be positive and get the council to do some things that we really want them to do. So I, I, I have, again, I, I think I've accepted most of the changes that people had suggested, even Michael's changes. And we're, I think, very close to having uh, agreed upon language there. Um, but I would move that we support this testimony for the July 5th roundtable hearing. Is there a second? A second. Okay, we can have some discussion then. So have you circulated the final language? No, I got the last language at like six o'clock tonight. Yeah, no, because that it's hard to vote. Uh, well, the that. last the last thing that I think was circulating, I printed out the emails so that I would have them handy here. Uh, uh, yeah, I sent my comment directly to Randy over the weekend, actually. So we talked about it a little bit, which was to add our name to recommendation 2.1. Um, which, and which I, right, just, I, I did circulate that. I mean, I just I circulated another draft that included a, a lot of those things. Okay, good. Um, yeah, I think we mostly have it, and I think what Randy is saying it's just the tone. It's the tone, and uh, to be and to have a language added into the council's resolution, that draft resolution. For instance, on Chaz's proposal, I suggested that his sentence. Uh, which was, and he added some additional language there, which I think is fine. But the last sentence said, setting up to prepare those details in the dark without ongoing participation necessarily increases the risk of community and ANC opposition to the outcome. And I suggested instead saying that setting up the, to prepare these details in the dark without ongoing participation unnecessarily increases the risk of a less than completely sec successful outcome. I, I don't think we should be talking about opposition. Uh, we're not going to oppose what's coming down out of this process, but we're going to work on it to make it work. And I, it's just unnecessarily negative. Yeah, John? Although, although the community may be more. Yeah, are we, are we uh, removing any kind of conditional suggestion in this? That's what I would suggest. I would, yeah, I, I would remove all any anything that that suggests a kind of a threatening or conditional approach. I, I think yeah, I'm this, not persuaded that's the way to go. Yeah, this was all Chaz's suggestion was in lieu of. Um, I had suggested just deleting the the sentence that um, Michael had suggested about uh, withdrawing our support or opposing the the SAP or something to that effect. And I just suggested a modification of Chaz's suggestion, um, but that would, I think um, it, it would not, and I, I don't want to suggest in any way that we are about to oppose the SAP or not support the SAP. Yeah, I think Randy, my language said that it would increase the risk of the likelihood of community opposition if, if there's not meaningful engagement at the earliest stage. Um, I have your language here somewhere, just a second. What the, the, the sentence that I was concerned about was, therefore, unless early participation is uh, ensured as required below, RANC pursuant to conditions in our May 9th resolution has no choice but to withdraw its support. No, I, no. That, I that's been, that I, I, but Randy, after Chaz's, modification i said fine except i would move the word i want i removed the word risk put in likelihood and it was supposed to be likelihood of community opposition unless unless we're involved early in this process is what my thought is um there is an increased risk of community opposition you can take out a and c opposition if you want but that's what i think is likely to happen that if we don't have an early and active role in this implementation design process, we're going to get um, community opposition because they they feel already that they've been excluded, and now we are not 
advising the council that this is the risk that they run. And, uh, you know, that's can, that. Can we, can we use the language that I suggested, which was unnecessarily increases the risk of a less than completely successful outcome? Fine with me. I like right. that language personally. Okay. Um, I don't know who had their hand up first. Um, Connie. I think it was John was first, then Peter. Okay, John. The okay, John. So, so all of these comments we've been discussing in the last five minutes are replacement for the proposal of withdrawal, which we are eliminating. Correct. Okay. Okay. Uh, Connie or Peter? Peter. Just very quickly to Michael, let me just say, I would dearly, dearly, dearly love to say we would draw. But the fact, there, there's simply facts on the ground, which is that this thing's going to move forward. We need to try as best we can to be at the table. That doesn't get us there. I do think that the two asks that we need to be absolutely sure of, and I think Randy agreed to language that got us as close as that we're going to get to. One of them is that we're at the drafting table for the new zone. I think equally, we need to reinforce that we are, we are early and, and continuous participants in what happens at the community center library campus. I mean, after that, the world is all new. There, there, there may be no new development on Connecticut Avenue. There may be, this may, the community center library may spur spur uh, a PUD, who knows what, but I, I, those two asks, if, if we can get those, we're still in the game. Um, yeah. And so I, I, I just hope that the, the, the testimony is firm on those. So. Yeah, but then, then to, for the commission, generally speaking, we shouldn't write resolutions that say, unless this, then that. And then when the unless doesn't happen, we don't follow up on the then that. Well, I, I think that I think we got a lot more than perhaps you think, but I, I think they gave us a good deal and not everything, but they gave us a lot. And I think we're going to be able to work with OP on this. Um, and, and it's not just going to be OP. There are going to be other um, the deputy mayor for economic development is going to be involved in, in this as well. Connie. Yes. <laughs> I just just lost my train of thought for a second there. Um, I just uh, in the when we talk about tone and we say we want to be positive, I don't really love the language dark and like something is happening in a dark room. You know, I, I think I think we should say the community was involved from the very beginning. We would like to stay involved. We should it should be a more transparent process. I mean, that's really the goal, right? Because what we don't know is maybe they could come out with something exactly what we want. We, we just don't know that. So if we're at the table, we'll hear it as it's going, right? That's the whole point. And um, so I'm sorry, Chaz. I mean, I know you, you put it in there. I, when I read it, I felt like I'm not so sure. So I, 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 I'm not, I don't really love that language. Um, I, know what, I know the point you're trying to convey, but I think we can convey the point um, just as, just as, um, well, if we say that right now, we don't know which office in OP is going to, who may not have been intimately involved, is going to take this plan and know what the special zone should be. So we want to be in early and we'd like to know, this is where we talked about the schedule, you know, John talked about like lay that out for us so that we have some understanding. And that's all about transparency, right? It's not, it's, it's not really assuming that someone has bad intentions. It's just that if it's open, then we kind of know. Like this is a lot, a lot of people want, you know, open government for that reason because they don't really, and the and the trusting people is a little hard. So um, I'm happy to say it in a in a softer way. So have yeah, at it. It's not soft. It's not a soft way. It's more like a, 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 it's. I'm not trying to say soften it so much as I'm trying to say, <laughs> I'm trying to say like, you know. What we really want is transparency. That's what we, we want. Could we just in the sentence that we were discussing previously, uh, just leave out the word in the dark. And so it would read setting up to prepare those details without ongoing participation, community participation, we could say, unnecessarily increases the risk of a less than completely successful outcome. 
I think it's important that we add community participation because okay. you've heard over and over and over that the community feels it's been excluded, that we're acting on our own um, okay. without their involvement. Well, Got it. Got it. That's done. I will accept that as a friendly amendment. Okay. Any other discussion? I would suggest that we vote then. All those in favor of adopting the, the testimony with those modifications, and I will send around a copy for everybody to look at before when it's finalized. All those in favor? Seven zero. Okay, wonderful. I really do appreciate this, and I think being unanimous on this point is going to be very persuasive to the council and very helpful. I also would uh, enlist others assistance in talking to individual council members about this. Um, I will be glad to talk to, to uh, Janice Lewis George and uh, Mary Che uh, if others want to talk to other council members. Um, and I can also talk to uh, Alyssa Silverman. I owe her a telephone call anyway. So um, I, I think we can really make this happen. And I think the council will be very receptive to this. Okay. Um, the last things we have on our agenda are the commission business. Um, and the first is the June 13th minutes. Uh, Peter, you want to make a motion with regard to those minutes? Uh, yeah, let me just say I've taken edits from Randy, Connie, and I, I'm, I'm taking counsel from Chaz, who says my section on the DDOT presentation about Connecticut Avenue makes it sound like it's too open-ended. So I want to add there that um, the mayor has already chosen concept three, make it sound much more what it is, which is right. it's a done deal. Uh, uh, um, so uh, I, uh, I'll, I'll circulate that, but with those modifications, uh, I move that we accept the June 13th minutes. All those in favor, seven zero. Okay, John, you have, um, Financial report and checks to approve. We have uh, we have three checks tonight. One is to Randy for a Zoom reimbursement, two hundred and twenty-two dollars and fifty-eight cents. We have one for Verizon, four hundred and sixty-two dollars and twenty-six cents, and we have a request from Stephanie Van Pelt to reimburse her for one hundred ninety-nine dollars and ninety-nine cents for the GoDaddy internet support. So I move that we approve all of those. All those in favor? Seven zero. All right. Okay, uh, possible items for our July 11th meeting. There's quite a lot really. Uh, election of the new chair will be the first order of business. Uh, we've invited uh, dis District Bridges to come back um, and to talk about the needed improvements for the Chevy Chase Main Street. And I think um, that's important for us to do. Um, been a presentations on and discussion on improved pedestrian access to Chevy Chase Circle. Uh, this was initiated by the Friends of Chevy Chase Circle. Uh, and I've already lined up um, Derek Voigt, Voigt, Voigt from uh, DDOT and his counterpart essentially at the Maryland uh, Department of Transportation uh, to be there. and. Director Lott may also be there as well. Um, and we'll try to put them in the first half of the first hour of the meeting so that uh, Director Lott can be there too. But uh, this has been a perpetual problem of access, pedestrian access to the circle. And hopefully the, there's a proposal now on the table about, about a way to, to improve that significantly. Uh, then the item that we postponed from tonight's meeting, uh, Christopher Geldhart, uh, Deputy Mayor for Public Safety uh, regarding enhance, enhancing public safety at apartment buildings. And then we'll have the vote on the uh, historic Chevy Chase DC grant application that we heard tonight. Anything else? Okay, I think that's it. Then. Randy? Yes. Uh, Connie and I are involved in the uh, Connecticut Avenue Citizen Advisory Committee and they're having these hearings tomorrow and the next day. Um, but um, we are concerned about the schedule for the, they were proposing to set up little community task forces and other things to get input over the summer and into the fall. But that schedule is very unclear. 
including whether whether and when they're going to do the studies that about extending things north of Legation Street. And so um, we are, haven't thought out yet exactly how we want to engage with DDOT on doing that, um, but it's an issue what we want to we may want to bring up in some fashion at our next meeting, depending on how that hearing goes. Okay, there there has certainly been a lot of uh, discussion on the listservs about oh, yeah. that recently, and uh, so I, I we do need to have a, a, a meeting about that. I think yeah. as soon as it becomes a uh, an appropriate time, and you and Connie are our guides on that. Yeah, well, that, that's why our key question is: Well, what is the appropriate time? It's pretty unclear. Right. Okay. Okay. Anything else? All right. I really appreciate this and. This is my last time as chair, and uh, I have really enjoyed working with all of you, and it's been a, an absolute pleasure, and I look forward to continuing to work with you, but just not the role of chair. So, well, you're thank you. yes, you'll, you're, you'll still be a part of the. I'll still be here. Yes, I'll be okay. here. I think okay. you're chair. You're, you're chair until we elect somebody else on the 11th. That, that's right. We're we're going to elect somebody else on the 11th. <laughs> okay. All right, guys. Okay. If we don't, if we, if we don't elect don't anybody, worry. then you stay on as chair. Is that how that works? What did you say, Mike? Uh, if we don't elect anybody, then it defaults right. to him. I, I I think my wife might disown me then. <laughs> it's interesting. That's, that's, I, that's your that's your issue, Rand. I, 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 I was trying to convince somebody uh, in my SMD that they should run, and uh, he came back and said. No, I can't do it. My wife told me that I could only run if I were single. <laughs> oh, wow. That's wow. Okay. Are you taking it under advisement? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank okay. you all. Thank you. Okay. Everyone. And uh, Connie, the Connie you've, got the, you've got the chat. I, I'm going to do it one more time. I'm going to save the chat one more time. And then there wasn't anything in the QA. And, yeah, nothing. Correct. So right. I should get it at the end of the meeting. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. We ended pretty well. Oh, I got to stop the recording too. <laughs>